Are you ready to spill some tea today? I am thinking about how much tea Oh, how much? <laughs> Too much tea. <laughs> been in training for about a decade and a half. <gasps> so I've been in training with JYP. <gasps> Specific incidents are, first of all, borderline or definitely criminal. Yeah, they've seen pictures of them naked on a company camera. Ew! <laughs> Oh, but that even competition shows on me? Yes, you, that's... Oh, mm, I know you're what's hurt. happening. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know people who do the fixing. Oh, really? Oh. K-pop industry. Like, how can you let this girl go, you know? Well, they did. Yeah. Hey guys, we're gonna go to a cafe. We're gonna meet up Gina, she's a good friend of mine. We're gonna be talking about our past experiences in K-pop. I've never did a talk like this ever because you know I was signed in a company, so I was never allowed to. I mean I'm not signed to any company anymore, so I am able to give you guys the tea. We're gonna be talking about the darkest sides that we've experienced. Pretty at night. I should never came here at night. Oh, eh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's right there. Hi, Gina. Hi. Today, it's a bit of a dream, isn't it? Are you ready to spill some tea today? I am thinking about how much tea Oh, I how much? <laughs> Too much tea. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Dinner. Look at, look at the bacon. This is what's trending these days, guys. Truffle. It's a croissant and waffle mixed together. Time to spill some tea. We're gonna talk about our experiences in K-pop. Hi, my name is Gina. I am a former K-pop trainee. I've been in training for about a decade and a half. <gasps> yeah, it's a long. I it was ten years. It was a long journey. Yeah, it's too long a story to spill yeah. here right mm -hmm. now. And I have a video mm. which talks about the whole experience. It's in Korean, but I have English subtitles. So Ooh. if you're curious about the whole journey, you yeah. can go to here, okay. here, I'll here. A card. Okay. So you can go directly. Yeah. yeah. So I've been in training with JYP. <gasps> now Kakao M. Mm. Then it was Loen. That's and met. Why, that's why you know I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now I'm CJ. And then I moved on to like tiny companies before trying my luck in musical before I officially finally quit. And somewhere along my journey towards the end, that's when I met Coco. Yeah. We were at a company together mm -hmm. called. Uh, I forgot the name. M Plus. Okay. You remember? You don't remember? Oh, I don't remember. It was like a Chinese company? Was it? Korean company? I don't, I don't I know. I don't know. Yeah. But it was a very brief moment. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. But I always seen like Gina practicing in the practice room and I was like, oh, yeah. she's amazing. <laughs> you guys check out her like Instagram. She posts videos, right? Do you yeah, have I some do. on your YouTube as well? Like, yep. You can see her dance and sing. Like, she's like the most talented. Was to be solo artist but yeah we're just well, gonna yeah tell you guys also why we left the yeah, industry why we left the industry and why we decided to go a different route mm -hmm. Gina now is a travel writer yeah and a K-pop lyricist that's amazing she even like graduated from Korea there right oh yeah Korea University, university. Mm -hmm. she's smart she's talented she's a great dancer a singer she's so what? kind she's she's a great writer it's like like, oh, K pop industry, you didn't know what you're missing. <laughs> like, how can you let this girl go, you know? Well, they did. Yeah. Today, I wanted to be, I didn't want to like point fingers mm. or drop names yeah. or. Because we, especially you, I think, get a lot of questions about why did you leave? Why yeah. are you not trying anymore? Mm -hmm. Well, you should have done that. You should have done this, this better, yeah. more, longer. This is just like a 
clearing ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why I left the industry, why I decided to not be in a company anymore, is because I just ran into like a clear ceiling all the time. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how hard I tried, I felt like there was always this like clear ceiling that I couldn't really get through without losing myself. Mm. I grew up with different beliefs and different ethics and just there were some things that I couldn't allow myself to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna get more into that in detail today. I wanna like explain my friends' experiences as well. Like a lot of my friends... <laughs> it's, it's really difficult to not talk about specific incidents yeah. mm -hmm. because specific incidents are, first of all, borderline or no, definitely no. criminal yeah or too disgusting for me to yeah. talk about mm. or it could lead people into a lot of guessing yeah, and i don't want to do guessing. that mm -hmm. but there are definitely things like a lot of people speculate that this industry is filthy yes it's not always like that yeah it's some, not always like that yeah. some people get to where they are by doing Nothing but good. Who, Definitely. And those people are extremely lucky people. Extremely lucky. Mm -hmm. All of it has to like go in hand in hand. Right. It has to work together. So we both got into this industry thinking, hoping that we would be one of those lucky few mm, who right, can right. make it without mm -hmm. getting our hands dirty. dirty. <laughs> but what mm. I realized, just like Coco, there are a lot of things that you don't want to experience, but mm. Even if you don't get to experience it, you see it. Yeah. I realize that I'm not the kind of person who can just stand by and watch those things take yeah, place. I'm so mm. I can't. So I'm not taking part, yeah. but just by you know being a bystander makes me feel really bad yeah. about just being there. Mm. One thing for sure, even if you don't get to do any of the dirty stuff, you have to let it happen yeah you, and just like pretend like you didn't yeah, see anything pretend you don't see anything i know you guys are like curious because we're not saying exactly mm. but while i was training someone was actually approached uh one of the people that were, i was training with and that person was actually our dance teacher okay he was a guy uh-huh and he would constantly call her out at night ah i see yeah and in the end but she didn't talk, tell the company she didn't. Why not? Because she was scared that she would get cut. Oh. Because depending on how well we are looked upon by our dance teachers or like whoever is practicing with us, mm. we get like a higher, I guess, grade. Mm. And what happens is there are some stories and there are some cases when you hear about it and you're like, how could you do that? It's so stupid. You think it's a very stupid choice. You think it's a very stupid course of action. But things like that happen to even to smart people when their dreams get involved. Right. So when your dream is on the line, yeah. you are really prone to making a lot of bad choices yeah. for the sake of your dream. Yeah. So I can't really blame those people who yeah. seem like they voluntarily made right, right, right. those choices because yeah. I know what they went through. Right. Um, yeah. I hear from other friends that someone in their company, a girl, is dating the CEO. Mm -hmm. So they're like very stressed out because they're trying hard to like be seen and noticed by the company, but then for some reason they're never given yeah. the attention because that CEO is only focused on his girl. Yep. And they've even told me that they've seen pictures of her naked on a company camera. Ew! <laughs> okay, that's not nice. I guess the company gave them like a camera to use, but it was like owned by the CEO, I guess, and he didn't remove the pictures before giving it to the, mm -hmm. to the girls. And then they were like looking through it because like they wanted to see like what they filmed. And then it's like, bam! It was like a naked butt picture of Somebody. That girl. And then she was with them, right? Oh no! <laughs> she was like, <gasps> no. But the thing is, her face was kind of covered in the picture. In the picture, okay. kind of like, who oh, is it? Like zoom in and everything, but it was kind of dark. So they were like, oh my god, I can't tell like who it is. Maybe it's the CEO's girlfriend. Well, then that specific girl was like, we need to delete the picture, and she went on and deleted it. Yeah. So the rest of the girls were like. 
why did she delete the picture? And then they all left the company, and then they started to realize, mm -hmm. oh, they were dating. Yeah, it happens. I, I don't think this is common just in K-pop industry. Yeah, it's of course. Of any course. entertainment industry, right, right, it does right. happen. Any industry, yeah. it does happen, but the frequency yeah. of crazy things happening is all is yeah it's, but it's just so unfair for the other girls because they're all working the same here's, like here's one thing if you want to get into the entertainment business mm -hmm. you can't expect fairness yeah oh my you, god oh no. and that's one of the reasons that i left the industry you can't expect fairness and you have to be able to cope with things going illogically unfairly and haphazardly, randomly. If you don't study 10 hours, you're not gonna do as well as somebody who studied for you know, longer than you. But in the inter entertainment business, nothing works like that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Nothing, and even if you get the best scores, even if everybody wants your album out first, if, even if you have a debut date set next week, it can just not happen. Yeah. Somebody can change their mind. Stages can crash and burn. Anything can happen if you put all your eggs in the basket, and the basket breaks. It's just—it's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard to be able to make it to the final. I don't know if there's such a thing as final line, but if you, if, if you can get there without being too hurt, I would say that you are a very very lucky person. Yeah. And I realized that I'm not the kind of person who can stand tolerate. Yeah, yeah, a lot of unfairness that takes place. Me too. Oh. You actually tolerated longer. I actually tolerated <laughs> more respect. than enough. Respect more oh. than enough. Yeah. And I think that's why there's no regrets. Mm. I know that I gave everything I could mm. to withstand what it is. So it feels like, kind of feels like I've been through it all, even yeah. if I haven't debuted. I wanted to do a certain type of music for me. What I wanted to do, very clearly, was very specific. And all the producers, everybody had agreed upon it from the onset. So I thought we were going to the right direction. But yeah. there is something called a trend. Oh, right, right, right. And yeah. yeah, so when things are happening, you just gotta ride away. Yes. Yes. And true. when I am preparing my album, and people will be like, okay, we're gonna change the tone of the album. Like, really? completely, we're gonna do a 180. Really? So if it was like Janet Jackson, uh -huh. it's gonna be like, I don't know, something really cute. I couldn't really say it's like okay Janet to Janet Jackson to Kenny Pamu Pamu. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I was not really cool oh. with a big change in music. I wanted a certain type of color for me. But usually in K-pop, yeah. what happens is you sing what you're given. Yes! Oh my gosh, I wanted to like talk about this too. Yeah. I never came to Korea thinking I wanted I was gonna do like you know the music that I have done, which mm -hmm. is very cute, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying. We don't really have a say yeah. in what kind of music that we wanna do. They all decide for you how the trend is. Do what you want to do and yeah. show your color. Yeah, you know, like I feel like that's the real definition of an artist mm. too. Mm. Like you show your own creativeness. These days, it's changing a lot more like that compared to you know just like when we were training, it was all about idols. Like they had to have a certain image, they had to have a certain concept, you know, style, music. You know how like you just flick on the TV and you see some singer singing a really weird song, wearing some really bad clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very easy for you to say, oh, ew, like, what are you saying? What are you wearing? But I never do that because I, I know, know I can't do it because like, it's, it's not it's heartbreaking. It's not her choice. It's not her choice. And it's just, it's really sad. And I, I give I all my respect to everyone who's doing their no. thing on stage, whether it's forced or voluntary. No. I, I just like respect them so much for just sticking it out no. until they can have a say in their music. Some people make a choice and decide to go indie. Just write their own music, go on small stages, you know. How come you're not planning to release your own album? Well, <laughs> I would say that I had like a pool of passion and I used it up completely. If I had left the industry before giving it my all, 
I might have kept on like trying. I still get like calls from audition programs. I got a call from, you know, there are so many trot programs these days. I get calls from that. I can't even say trot. But I always say no because I don't have it left in me to compete for it. Like, oh, but then even competition shows on me. Yes, you, that's. Oh, mm, I know what's heard? happening. Oh. <laughs> I know. But then it was already exploited, right? There was news about you know the produce 101. Yep. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it, yeah. So no matter how hard you try, they already have a, like a list of people that are yeah. gonna be at the top. Uh -huh. You know. It's and, already planned. And because I've been in the industry since I was like 15, uh -huh. I know people who do the fixing. Oh, really? So when I do get calls, I'm like, I already know your head producer oh and I know how your show gets made, so I'm not gonna go on the show. I actually, That's how I actually told the writer. Yeah, I tell the writer. I told the writer. <laughs> such a deal. I'm like, it's like I, I know how that show gets made. They told me not to go on that show, so I'm not gonna. Yeah, I said that. And they're like. Okay, and actually they try to, I'm not gonna say which show, yeah, yeah, yeah. but one of the shows actually tried to make a deal with me. They're like, okay, so we'll get you to this level. That's what they always do though. And I actually told them I wanted to go higher. I'm like, okay, I wanna, I'm gonna go on the show. If you put me on a higher rank, mm -hmm. I can't do anything below that because I know how I'm gonna exploit it through here. And that I know I knew that was not gonna happen, so I didn't go on that show. But yeah, wow. I mean I'm pretty sure there are shows that don't do that. Mm -hmm. Then you know we we're just sharing experiences yep. to you guys, what we heard, what we seen. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me to work in a industry where trust is yeah, not really given. If you get lucky, just you <laughs> so you have to be really lucky, and I can't I can't have a career with my fingers crossed all the time that That's is just so not true. yeah i just can't that do that yeah. now we'll go and cry <laughs> we're gonna go and cry but there are definitely like i am over it i gave my all but there are days you don't have one like there are days i wake up and i'm like it shouldn't be like this i know i should have had my dream i miss performing mm. you know i miss like singing in front of an audience and you know reaching out and meeting fans one-on-one -on -one. i miss all that that's why i'm actually preparing an album by myself it's taking some long time <laughs> because i'm doing everything right yeah. by myself yeah and a lot of money goes into mm -hmm. this production so but i'm taking my time and i'm actually doing music that i wanted to do I think all this time that's what matters yeah. mm. and i got to write a little bit as well mm -hmm. so go coco yay <laughs> I'll let you hear it later. Yay! I mean, like, I didn't want to do like an expose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just like some questions that we get often. Right, right, right. So, yeah. if you have any questions, maybe yeah. we can do a follow up. Maybe we could do a follow up yeah. QA. Mm -hmm. yeah. Leave like questions that you have. I mean, she's been in amazing companies, guys. Like, if you know, like, everyone always asks me like audition tips, but I can't give. Uh, oh, yes, guys, like, I have audition, audition tips. tips mm -hmm. Because. Honestly, I was too scared to audition for any like big companies. Uh -huh. I didn't recall, but I like auditioned when I was in I, middle school. Middle school, mm -hmm. there was an SM audition yeah. in the states. Yeah, I tried for that, but of course I didn't get it. But then I forgot about that. But then, yeah, when I came to Korea, I never auditioned for anything else uh, than like M Plus. Uh, and then I was in like core content media yeah. for a little bit, which is MBK right now, mm -hmm. and like. So many other companies actually. I was in like CJ. I was in uh. Yeah! <laughs> I what? Was How many companies were you? But I was only in like small companies. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, you know, how she auditioned for the bigger companies, this is your chance. You know? <laughs> like the transition of my companies is also in my YouTube video. Oh. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Cards. Oh, do you tell them how you auditioned them all? Actually, like the first, the first edition I did was televised nationally what? Really? so it was kind of like it was like the first generation of audition program reality shows so i just applied for it and the whole audition process and the training went on air for about four months really? yeah and then after the show i signed with jyp wow. yeah because jyp was running that show oh really yeah so we were on that show that's when i met <gasps> oh yeah, she's yeah, really tight with Yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's where we met. We go 
like, that's like 2001. Whoa. So it, we go back 20 wow. years. <laughs> Next year is actually oh our... How old are you? <laughs> I am 55. <laughs> Next not. year is our 20th anniversary. Yeah. That's how we started. And after um, I signed with JIP, because there's like a four months reference of me training, when people hear that I'm out of JIP or I'm leaving them, they just contact me directly, so I didn't have to audition. So after JYP, it was just like a very smooth transition of uh, companies. Yeah, different companies, yeah. Well, any other questions you guys have for Gina, like leave it down in the comments down below. And we'll probably make, I feel like there's going to be a lot of questions. I hope so. I like answering questions. Years back, mm -hmm. I didn't want to answer any of the questions. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, yeah, me too. Me too. I'm like that too. There are so many people who just don't like, know oh what's going yeah. on and just like, go straight into the business. Like, you gotta be careful of these things. You gotta know about these mm. stuff that may happen. Yeah. You gotta be careful of such people. And if that I can be, me. yeah. Me. I jumped into this mm. thinking of just all rainbows and butterflies. Mm -hmm. Really. Like, I just thought, like, if I work hard, even though I'm not as talented, if I just work hard, I'll get to the top. <laughs> and it would be really good if that happened for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. But it's not but, true. So Yeah, some it's this is like yeah, it's just like lottery. Mm. Oh my god, it's a lottery. It, it is like it is. lottery. So it's yeah. it's I think it's wise to know all your options right, and right, right. yeah, what you should do in such such yeah. so anything that I can be of help for anybody Aww. would yeah. I like answering questions now. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow Gina's uh, Instagram, YouTube. She's on it all. And leave a lot of comments down below, and we'll get back to you guys in the next video. We will. Bye! Bye.